While Zhao Fanggang was helping Rao Jing organize her clothes, he accidentally caught a glimpse of her nightgown, and his heart instantly started racing. Rao Jing, keenly noticing his subtle reaction, said to him, Hey, I'm explaining the details about the brewery to you, what are you thinking about? Zhao Fanggang snapped back to reality from his momentary daze and said, Just give me the information. But deep down, Zhao Fanggang knew that he had truly fallen for Rao Jing. The project that Tu Xiaoning had meticulously prepared unexpectedly fell through. Despite Tang Yuhui's ill intentions towards her, Tu Xiaoning first reflected on herself, believing that the failure was due to her lack of thorough research during the initial stages of the project. Throughout this difficult time, Ji Yuhang stayed by her side, offering warm comfort and encouragement. While Tu Xiaoning was grateful for his support, she also recognized that Tang Yuhui's capabilities should not be underestimated. In the office, Zhao Fanggang mentioned to Rao Jing that Tu Xiaoning had been quite distracted lately, as if something was weighing heavily on her mind. Rao Jing scolded him for gossiping. Just then, the bank manager walked in with good news, announcing that Tang Yuhui had been promoted to manager due to her outstanding performance. Rao Jing keenly noticed the change in Tu Xiaoning's mood and, when it was time to take a photo, she deliberately positioned Tu Xiaoning next to Ji Yuhang. After work, Tang Yuhui invited everyone to dinner to celebrate her promotion. Tu Xiaoning, however, stayed behind in the office, using the excuse that she had to work late. Although Ji Yuhang was enthusiastically pulled along by his colleagues to join the celebration, he couldn't stop thinking about Tu Xiaoning. Finding an excuse, he turned back and returned to the office, wanting to be by her side. Ji Yuhang gently comforted Tu Xiaoning, telling her that failure is only temporary and encouraging her not to dwell on it too much. Tu Xiaoning was very grateful and reassured Ji Yuhang not to worry about her, urging him to go and share the joy with his colleagues. Tu Xiaoning arranged to go shopping with Ling Wei, who seemed eager to buy everything she saw. Tu Xiaoning held her back insisting that she shouldn't spend money recklessly. Just then, Chi Yu called and invited Ling Wei to the aquarium, saying he had something important to tell her. Seeing this, Tu Xiaoning encouraged Ling Wei to go meet with Chi Yu, while she stayed behind on her own. After meeting up, Chi Yu told Ling Wei that he had passed his police exam. Ling Wei was overjoyed and not only kissed him but also insisted on giving him a gift. A motorcycle, a watch, or Chamberlain's favorite basketball you name it, which one do you want, she asked. Chi Yu replied, I just want something you like the stars, the sunrise, the sunset. From now on, I'll be with you every day to watch them together. The two took a photo together to commemorate the moment. The next day, when Ling Wei woke up, she found that Chi Yu had already gotten up early and returned from his morning run. She playfully complained that she was hungry, and Chi Yu, doting on her, promised to make her a delicious breakfast. Early in the morning, Tu Xiaoning began preparing for the day. Today was the first time Ji Yuhang would be taking her to pay respects at his father's grave. When she saw that Ji Yuhang was also up, she quickly asked him to check if everything she had prepared was in order. Just as Ji Yuhang was about to visit his father's grave, he received a call from Tu Xiaoning's father informing him that his mother had suddenly collapsed and was being rushed to the hospital. Ji Yuhang and Tu Xiaoning immediately hurried to the hospital, where the doctor's grave announcement hit them like a bolt from the blue Ji Yuhang's mother's cancer had spread extensively, and she only had one to two months left to live. Despite the overwhelming pain in his heart, Ji Yuhang firmly insisted that the doctors do everything they could to save his mother, no matter the cost. Ji Yuhang focused on negotiating the project leaving the responsibility of caring for his mother to Tu Xiaoning. He immersed himself in work, attending social functions late into the night and sometimes staying out all night. Tu Xiaoning watched this with a heavy heart, silently supporting and encouraging him, and providing unwavering companionship during this difficult time. Whenever Ji Yuhang found time to visit his mother, he always carefully avoided meeting her, fearing that his exhaustion and worry might affect her mood. So, he only stayed outside. Tu Xiaoning took the opportunity to update Ji Yuhang on work and mentioned that his mother had been missing him these past few days. He responded with a distracted, hmm, brushing it off. Just then, Tang Yuhui entered and said, 
Senior, I heard that your mother is ill. Which hospital is she in? I'd like to arrange for the best specialist to see her. Ji Yuhang replied, There's no need for that, I've already made arrangements. Tang Yuhui then offered, In that case, I'll bring some gifts to visit her. Ji Yuhang said, My mother's condition is not good and cannot accept visitors. After Ji Yuhang rejected Tang Yuhui's offer, she attempted to vent her frustration by demanding that Tu Xiaoning help her with some tasks. She instructed Tu Xiaoning to organize some documents and insisted that the sorted documents be handed over to her by tonight. When Tu Xiaoning asked why she needed to help, Tang Yuhui responded, Haven't you adjusted yet? I'm now the manager, and you're still an assistant. Isn't it your job to help me with the documents? Tu Xiaoning replied, You are the manager but I am only an assistant to the manager Rao. My workload is already at full capacity. When Tu Xiaoning arrived at the hospital, she saw that nurse CAI had accidentally hurt Ji Yuhang's mother. She quickly replaced CAI and asked Ji Yuhang's mother with concern, does it hurt a lot? Ji Yuhang's mother replied, it's nothing to worry about, and told her not to be concerned, asking her to also reassure Ji Yuhang not to worry. Tu Xiaoning responded, your son is very worried about you, but he's been incredibly busy with work and frequent business trips, which is why he hasn't been able to come to the hospital. Tu Xiaoning received a call from Zhao Fanggang, who informed her that he had found a client for the park. She responded calmly, Thank you, little Zhao. In the evening, when Tu Xiaoning returned home and reviewed the project documents on her computer, she felt she lacked the courage to take on the community project. Just then, Ji Yuhang came home. She said, I need to talk to you about something. Ji Yuhang replied, I'm too tired, let's discuss it another day. Tu Xiaoning insisted, No, I need to talk now. Ji Yuhang then embraced her and said, All right, let me recharge a bit first. The next day at work, Tu Xiaoning informed Zhao Fanggang that she wouldn't be taking on the community loan project. He asked her if she had another project. She replied, no, I just fear that I might not do well. He reassured her, don't worry, both Jing and I will help you. Tu Xiaoning then explained, someone in my family is ill, and I need to go to the hospital every day. I really can't take on this project right now. Ji Yuhang's heart was filled with conflict and struggle. He was afraid to face his seriously ill mother, fearing that his presence might make her even more upset. So, he chose to silently wait downstairs in the hospital. Tu Xiaoning waited at home for Ji Yuhang's return, struggling to understand why he was reluctant to see his mother. When they finally sat down to talk, they found themselves at odds due to their differing perspectives. Ji Yuhang believed that earning more money was essential to providing better treatment for his mother, while Tu Xiaoning felt that companionship and care were equally important. Their disagreement led to an unresolved argument.